I remember reading Rich Dad Poor Dad when I was around 13 or 14 and the only thing I can remember about the book was my reaction to it. Wow, it completely changed the way I looked at money. Being that young, however, I did not act on any of the ideas that the book talked about. So for this week's cup of coffee, I decided to revisit an old classic and see what we could relearn. Here are the three biggest lessons that I learned from Rich Dad Poor Dad. Let's get right into it. I had two fathers, one who was rich and one who was poor. Poor dad was highly educated and intelligent. He had a PhD and completed four years of undergrad work in less than two. He then went on to Stanford University and the University of Chicago to do his advanced studies all on full financial scholarships. The other father never finished the eighth grade. Both earned substantial incomes. Yet, one struggled financially all his life. The other would eventually become one of the richest men in Hawaii. One died leaving tens of millions of dollars to his family and his church. The other just left his family bills to be paid. Imagine that you had two fathers. One being your own biological father and the other the father of your friend. Your biological dad is a lot like the normal middle class uncle. He values his college education and he constantly believes that in order to get ahead, you need to keep collecting degrees and working harder. Your best friend's father, however, is a little different. He's a high school dropout who does not believe much in degrees. However, he does emphasize on the need for building assets and acquiring financial knowledge. When Robert Kiyosaki was nine years old, he and his best friend Mike went up to Mike's father, Rich Dad, and asked him what the secret was to making a lot of money. Rich Dad told the boys that he would teach them, but not classroom style. They would need to work for him. And that is what they did for 10 cents an hour. Robert and Mike would spend three hours each day stacking groceries and taking inventory in the hot Hawaii heat. At first, Robert was enthusiastic about his job, but he soon began to realize that 30 cents would not get him far on his journey to becoming rich. At the end of each day of hard work, Rich Dad would pay the boys 30 cents, money which was barely enough for them to buy the newest comic book that was available in the stores. It didn't take them long to start complaining. They wanted a raise. And more importantly, they felt like they were being cheated. Both of them wanted to work for Rich Dad, but it was because he had promised them that he would teach them how to be rich. Instead, they were spending their days stacking groceries in the hot Hawaii heat. After hearing all their complaints, Rich Dad just smiled. Now, you sound just like one of my employees. What makes you think that I haven't been teaching you anything? During the last three weeks, I was giving you a life lesson, one that you boys are never to forget. Instead of teaching by giving you a lecture, I taught you boys the way life would through an experience. All I did was give you a taste of life. I'm glad that you got angry working for 10 cents an hour. If you had not gotten angry and had gladly accepted it, I would have to tell you that I could not teach you. True learning takes energy, passion, and a burning desire. When it comes to money, most people want to play it safe and feel secure. So passion does not direct them, fear does. Rich Dad was trying to teach the boys an important lesson. Life wouldn't care about them when they grew up. It was going to push them around and finally it was up to the boys to decide if they wanted to continue being pushed around or fight back. And if you think about it, life has been pushing you and me around too. There are so many of you who went to college to study to become engineers, artists, doctors and lawyers. And maybe you had a very specific interest in the field you chose. But once you were confronted with the job market, you probably took the first job that was offered to you. You became a cog in someone else's business. Life pushed you around and you let it. Those who have got what it takes to become like Rich Dad have the ability to deflect life when it pushes them around. By fighting back, both the boys proved that they weren't going to be easy pushovers. They both had what it took to become like Rich Dad. Takeaway number two. Once Robert and Mike had understood the first lesson, Rich Dad told them that now they were ready for the second biggest learning. They would now stack groceries for three hours a day, every single day in the hot Hawaiian heat. And instead of being paid, they would now do it for free. On hearing this, Robert's jaw just dropped. After all, he was just a nine-year-old boy who was being exploited by this cheapskate businessman. This had to be a violation of some child labor laws. On seeing the shock in Robert's eyes, Rich Dad said this, Well, you boys had better start thinking. You're staring at one of life's biggest lessons. If you learn the lesson, you'll enjoy a life of great freedom and security. But if you don't, you'll wind up like all my employees. They work very hard for very little money clinging to the illusion of job security. If that excites you, I'll give you a raise to 25 cents an hour. Robert could feel his heart beating faster, but there was a twinkle in Rich Dad's voice that made him almost think twice and say no to the offer. Okay, so I'll pay you $1 an hour. Kiyosaki could hear the voices screaming in his head, take the money, take it. But somehow he said no. Fine, how about $2 an hour, said Rich Dad. If Robert did say yes, then you'd be able to buy every last thing that he wanted. He would have been the richest nine-year-old in the world. But again, he said no. Rich Dad then said, okay, fine, I'll pay you $5 an hour. Suddenly, there was a silence. Robert knew that there was something off. 
the numbers were getting too big and too ridiculous. Not too many grown-ups in 1956 made more than $5 an hour. The temptation to earn more disappeared and a calm settled in. The part of Robert that had no price took over and suddenly there was a certainty in his brain about money and in his soul. Rich Dad had taught the boys their second lesson. Most people in this world have a price. But they don't have a price because they want to. They have a price because of emotions like fear and greed. The fear of being without money motivates us to work hard. And once we get paid, we think about all the wonderful things that money can buy before you even realize the pattern gets set the pattern of getting up going to work and then paying your bills your entire life gets run by two emotions fear and greed the boys began working just for knowledge and rich dad began to force them to think of ways of earning an income robert didn't even dare to tell his own father that he was working for nothing one day robert noticed two old comic books that were left lying around in one of rich dad's stores being broke and without any money this was the inspiration that led them to set up their first ever business they recovered all of the outdated comics in rich dad's store and set up a library in Mike's basement. Classmates had to pay 10 cents for entry and they could read any book that they wanted. Business was actually doing so good that the boys had to hire their first employee who was Mike's sister, whom they paid a wage of $1 a week. Before they could even realize it, the two boys were running a successful business that was raking nearly $10 a week in revenue. This was the start of their journey. Not of working to earn money, but of making money work for them. Takeaway number three. Think of your life as a tug of war between two teams, your assets and your liabilities. For Robert and his friend Mike, their library business was an asset and so were the comic books that they had. Other examples of assets are the stocks that you've invested in or online businesses. Liabilities on the other hand are things that take money out of your pocket. Liabilities are the credit card bills that just keep piling up, the luxury car that you thought you needed at the time or the newest iPhone that you just think you need to own. Rich Dad was trying to teach the boys that the only way for them to become wealthy was to look at the world the way the rich do. Not in terms of money, but in terms of assets and liabilities. Assets put money into your pocket, liabilities take money out of your pocket. This is the cash flow of a poor person. They have a job and they get a salary and they use all their salary on expenses. Since they're left with nothing, they usually live from paycheck to paycheck. The middle class do something similar. They get a salary, but most of their money is tied up in liabilities. Home loans, car loans and credit card debt. Just like the poor person, once they're done with their expenses, very little is left. The rich, on the other hand, play a very different game. They are always looking to acquire and keep assets and their main source of income is from the assets that they have collected over time. The main way to get out of the rat race is to stack up a team of assets that will work for you whenever you want them to. Once you have such a team, you don't need to worry about minor things such as taking a vacation or when you're going to retire. There's a secret to financial freedom and I'm going to give it to you for free. The wealthy, and I mean the really wealthy people of this world, got to where they are by being collectors. They became collectors of income generating assets and at the same time they kept those liabilities in check. Instead of working hard their whole lives, the rich and the wealthy make their assets work. If you enjoyed the ideas of the Rich Dad Poor Dad, then I'll attach a link down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I strongly recommend that you check this one out next. Thanks for watching dear friends. And until we meet again, this is Filter Coffee Finance signing off.